Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, we're here to be in worship, prayer, and there's no fellowship. So please stand and join us. We're going to go ahead and sing the song.
name, we thank you for the breath of life that you brought us here this day to worship you, one collective body, your church, your bride. Lord, teach us through your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a seat if you would, please. Bible Explorers, uh, you can uh, head off for your program. And, uh, why don't I ready to come pray for us all this morning? Morning. Thought I had a little more time than that. <laughs> uh, anybody here stressed this morning? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, I got a little bit of stress, but it's not my stress, it's someone else's stress. And so, you know, if you ever notice, like, when people get stressed, it migrates to people. But I'm here to tell you that there is nothing to be stressed about for anything because God is in control. And the Bible tells us that neither height nor depth nor uh, angels or demons, nothing can separate us from the love of God. So if we have the love of God and salvation, there's nothing to be, nothing to be stressed about. <clears throat> so just let it go. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise your name. You are in control. There's so many things that we're dealing with, Lord, issues with work and uh, sickness and death and uh, just health problems. Lord, it just, sometimes it goes on and on. But Lord, you hold the world in your hands. You, uh, you are in control of everything and we are yours. And you have told us that if, if we will remain in you and uh, you remain in us if we keep your word. Lord, there's nothing that we can't do. So just thank you, Lord, for that. Um, I just pray, Lord, that you would be here with us today, that you would take away any anxiety that anybody has, any distractions um, from being here and worshiping you. And so, Lord, we bless your name, we praise you, we love you, and we just we invite you into our hearts, Lord, and into our lives. Be with us. Be always be with us, Lord. And um, just let us always be strong in you. And Lord, um, you taught us how to pray a long time ago. You taught your disciples. And you told us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Yeah, thank you, Randy. So good morning, how are we all doing? Good. good. Yeah. Everybody being honest. Yeah, struggles are part of the deal. But uh, as Randy said, great news. God's in control. He's got it all. Um, a couple of quick announcements uh, before we open up the Word of God this morning. Um, with our, our prayer team has uh, revived something that we used to do back in the day when we gave you paper bulletins, which is to give you a paper prayer list. Uh, I don't know about you, but if I get emails on my phone, you know, they're less effective at me when getting to things in prayer than having a good old-fashioned list because I'm a old-fashioned guy. So, so uh, these are available. They're going to be on the table over there uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, things that you can pray about, some prayer praises to share. So um, uh, you can use this to uh, kind of up your game on uh, intercessory prayer, like praying for other stuff and other folks. And so um, I bring that to your attention. And uh, the other thing that uh, we're going to be doing just as a regular matter, uh, I think maybe last week, uh, and gave people an opportunity if they wanted prayer at the end of the worship service, was to come join uh, our prayer team folks like right up here, okay? And so we're going to make that just part of the regular pattern, okay? So uh, if, uh, if right now you think, boy, I'd like to pray with somebody, well, we'll make that available in not too terribly long. Of course, you've got to endure a sermon as communion Sunday, so I don't know, 1.15. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay. Okay. Uh, a couple other things just to let you know about is um, uh, if uh, you check your email, uh, something went out early this morning, just an update on progress in the uh, rebuilding. Uh, things are starting to, starting to percolate right now. So, an uh, uh, update for you guys and we'll keep you informed as, 
uh, important stuff happens, uh, especially things that we would really want to all participate in as far as decision making. And then one other uh, little news item is that um, uh, you know, my, my, uh, my new friends in the state police, uh, who I get a chance to talk to periodically, um, they, they informed me uh, a couple of days ago that uh, several people uh, you know, were uh, suspects in our arson fire, and some arrests have been made. In fact, all of the arrests have been made. And, uh, and so I expect that will become a, like a matter of uh, like the press and public, uh, public information office, press releases and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, so you, know, you can expect that news. Uh, and in fact, it was arson, okay? And the people that did it, they've been figured out and they have been, uh, they have been arrested and charged, okay? So uh, again, I, I don't know a lot because I just get these tidbits that they choose to share with me but there should be some public stuff in a couple of days. So something to pray about, because uh, here's the deal, right, is uh, we have been forgiven by a uh, loving God, and this word is pretty clear. I mean, we have been so forgiven that it is just like cuckoo for us to presume to withhold forgiveness from anyone else. And it applies in our everyday life, but in this case in particular, that, that mercy, that grace of Jesus that we've received, uh, we're gonna have an opportunity to put that on display. You know, so whether it's in your workplace or your family, or uh, if you happen to get jumped by a news group, and so uh, normally they'll be out here roaming around when that happens, looking for somebody to talk to. Um, here's uh, uh, here's your, here's the truth of the matter. I have been forgiven by God of everything that I've ever done, and I just can't see any other option other than to forgive the people that uh, would set a fire and burn our church. God forgives them, I forgive them, and I pray for His blessing and His best for them. Okay, so I um, hope that resonates with you. And, uh, if it doesn't, uh, go into hiding. Okay, so you don't say something stupid and end up on TV. Okay, okay, good. good. Okay. So we're going to be opening up the, the scriptures this morning. Uh, not surprisingly, to the book of Acts. That's what we're doing right now. And uh, that's what we do in this church is uh, we tend to, to, to settle into a book of the Bible and see what God has for us. And, uh, by the way, that does put us in a position to sometimes talk about the things we don't want to and to hear the things that um, I'd rather not tell you. And, uh, but we're not there this morning. We're in a, in a text that's going to be very encouraging this morning. Uh, by the way, happy October. Happy October. Okay, if you're a federal worker, you know, happy New Year's. Uh, the first year started today. Uh, I, I kind of like October uh, because, uh, well, a couple reasons. I like uh, apple stuff, okay? Don't bore me with pumpkin spice, that's not my deal. But I do like apple stuff, and, and I like, uh, the surf gets good this time of year, and I love the full foliage, but also my first grandchild was born in October. So we were looking forward to a birthday. Um, we have some birthdays like right in our midst, okay? And they're like old guys. And I don't want to embarrass them by telling you who they are, Bob and Mallory. Uh, or to sing happy birthday, Bob was like last week, Mallory is in a couple days. Anybody else have like a birthday going on like right now? John has a birthday. End of the month, okay. Okay, good. Well, it's communion Sunday, so for the sake of some time, we're just, uh, just, okay, why not? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Bob and Mallory and John and Zoe. Happy birthday to you. A oh, beautiful harmony coming in. Good. So, you know, when we celebrate birthdays, right? We uh, like, like they're, they're our custom. But most of our customers are kind of weird, but you know, you put like candles on a cake. And when the, when the kids are little, right, they just kind of go with kids. You go know, like one candle for each year, kind of a thing. And then when you get to be like geezers, like, well, like me and the other couple guys here that. You, know, you get like one candle, typically, right? Maybe on a cupcake or, you know, maybe on a plate of kale or something. <laughs> you, get your, you get your one candle, right? Because instead of counting all those candles and have to blow them out all at once, it's really hard if you're old because you don't have that kind of force of breath. Um, and also, you know, who wants to count all that? But, it, but you know, it, sometimes you get all those trick candles, right? You know the ones I'm talking about? The ones where they take like 4th of July sparkler dust and like, uh, put that in the, I think they put it in the wick, so you can't blow the candle out. Okay, like just give us a little caution from a guy who can make mistakes like this. That is like cruel if you do that to a little kid who has been persuaded that if they make a wish, they blow out all the candles that get their wish. So don't do trick candles on little kids, okay? Uh, you can do them to like Bob and Mallory and John and me because we're old guys, okay? But don't do it little kids. But there's trick candles, right? 
you can't blow them out. Now let me tell you something about our Jesus, right? He is the light of the world. And the message of the gospel is the message of that light. And many of you sang this song, like in a Sunday school kid, this one light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Right? Okay, this little light of mine. And then there's one verse in there that says, yep, yep, yep. What is it? Won't let Satan. Won't, yeah, thank you for the word. Won't let Satan, you know, right? That's not what you're saying with the hand signals. Won't let Satan blow it out. Well, let me tell you something. The gospel of Jesus Christ, Jesus himself, you and I, as the light of the world, Jesus said, you're the light of the world. Now, Satan can't blow it out. Because we would be like trick candles. Can't be blown out. And that, that's pretty encouraging, don't you think? Like if we're followers of Jesus, that, that, that we, like, we can't be extinguished, that the message we have can't be like covered up, it, 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 it can't be made to stop. Uh, the title of the message this morning, Unstoppable. That this whole Jesus thing is an unstoppable force. And as, as the early church is birthed, we start to see a pattern where when cool stuff really starts to happen, you know, I mean, first of all, like the teaching of Jesus before he goes to the cross, opposition comes up, right? Because the darkness can't comprehend the light. The darkness doesn't light the light. By the way, do you know how fast darkness advances? It doesn't. Light does, okay? In fact, the, 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 the feet of darkness moves at the speed of light, about three times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So when the light shows up, the darkness, it goes. The candle can be blown out. Well, th that opposition comes, and after the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, the early church gets started, and we've already seen, like, like kind of a first round, right, where Peter and John, they, uh, they are involved in a miracle, they're preaching the gospel, and it's happening, like, right at the temple there, and uh, the religious authorities, like, arrest them, you remember, it's back in chapter 4, they arrest them, they bring them in, they, you know, threaten them, and then send them on their way, and then they, you know, after they threatening time, then they have a prayer, right? They pray for boldness, they pray for miracles, and then God answers that prayer. And where we left off last week is with the apostles doing like these powerful miracles. And, and what they're doing is like right in Simon's portico, and it's like right at the temple, which is like headquarters for the old religion that is being replaced by the new covenant. And so the headquarters guys, you know, they're alarmed at this stuff. And it said, as we saw last week, that, that the number of people that are coming to faith is measured uh, not like as a crowd, but as the word was multitude. So like, you know, massive numbers of people are choosing to follow Jesus. And so not surprisingly, it's time for the opposition to make another move. And we're gonna read that this morning, and when they make that move, we're gonna see four powerful points of encouragement about how this little light of mine cannot be extinguished that we, we are like living trick candles. And so we cannot be stopped as we serve Jesus. So this is a lengthy passage, but I'd invite us to just listen to it all at once and then we'll talk about it. Uh, I'm gonna be in chapter five of Acts, beginning in verse 17. So I'd invite you to stand as we, as we hear from the Lord. But the high priest rose up and all who were with him, that is the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out, and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came, and those who were with him, they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the, official, when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported. We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. 
And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at, the, at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were outraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care of what you are about to do to this man. For before these days, Theudas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men. Let them alone, for if this plan and this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And then when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. Father in heaven, we thank you for these wonderful words of life. And Lord, we thank you so much for the light of the world, Jesus, who came. And we thank you, Lord, that as we open this word, you will use your spirit to illuminate these truths in our hearts and bring this light to life in us. And so that to, to that end, Lord, we just surrender to you now. Have your way in our minds and our hearts as we hear and as we receive the wonderful word of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, be seated if you would, please. Okay, so the, the idea is, you know, if God's on the move, you can't stop him. The idea is that the gospel of Jesus Christ is unstoppable. And the idea is that this, this light, this candle flame, if you will, of the gospel and of Jesus, the people of Jesus, is something that you, well, you can't stop it. And we, as I said, we're going to see four points of encouragement here. Okay, the first one is, we're at the beginning of the story, right? So, so the high priest and, and those that were with him, uh, that is the party of the Sadducees. By the way, two, two sets were in that, in that realm right now of, of guys who really wanted to follow God's word, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Um, you can tell the difference because the Sadducees did not believe in like an afterlife. They really didn't believe in the miraculous, and that's why they are sad, you see. Okay, so there, there's a little sidebar Bible lesson. But these guys, right, they, they're, it says they're filled with jealousy. Right? Like Jesus is winning all these people by these apostles that are doing the miraculous and telling people about Jesus. And so they arrest the apostles. The first round, they arrested Peter and John. Now they have Peter and John and the other ten. So they arrest these guys, and they throw them in the slammer. They put them in the public prison. They take them captive. You know, when Jesus' earthly ministry started, right, he gets baptized. He it is filled with the Holy Spirit. He has that time of, like, temptation in the desert. And, and, and then he goes back to his hometown, Nazareth. And he shows up at the synagogue, like where he grew up, like where he would have gone to like Hebrew school as a Jewish lad. And, 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 he, and he is now in the role of teacher, and they invite him to read the scripture and to teach. And um, they had some kind of like Bible read-through schedule thing going on, and they happen to be in the prophet Isaiah. If you're using our Bible read-through schedule, you're in the prophet Isaiah right now. And so he gets up and he starts reading from the scroll. And these are the words that he reads. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. So what do you think Jesus does? What do you think God does? What do you think the Lord's plan is when some of his people whom he loves are taken to prison? Well, you see it right here. He sends like the jailbreak angel. 
right? During the night, an angel Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out. How about that? So, so you think of the, the light of the gospel is being spread by these wild-eyed apostles doing miracles, and, and so you're going to lock them up. Yeah, that's a good plan. These are the same guys that thought the way to kill this thing was by killing Jesus. And what did he do? He rose from the dead. So they lock him up, and the jailbreak angel comes and takes him out. And not only does he say, hey, you guys are free, like run away. He doesn't say that. What he says is, he says, go, go and stand where in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Okay, so, birthday candle, I wish Jesus would go away, <sighs> comes right back to life. They just wasted their breath, their birthday boy breath. They just wasted it. <laughs> and, and, and so, like, here's, here's the simple message, right? If the world, if Satan, if the temptations of your own flesh attempt to take you captive, the Lord Jesus will send the jailbreak angel, and you will be released. In fact, the will be part, I don't quite have that right. Galatians 5, and verse 1 says, it is for freedom that Christ set us free. You're already free. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have already been set free from any and every and whatever captivity would hold you captive. I mean, maybe like bad men that would put you in prison, uh, like, like the case here. But most of us, the captivities that we experience are captivities to the, to the, to the, the schemes and the wiles of the enemy working with our flesh and with the help of a very organized world around us to take us captive to things like anxiety, fear, unforgiveness, and grudge. We just kind of talked about that in the context of the arsonists that torched our church. We got to take it captive to those things, to a temper, to anger. We can be taken captive by wounds inflicted on us in our childhood and the way they affect our ways of thinking and our, the way we are able to relate to other people. Those things take people captive. We can be taken captive by the, just those, the hurts that we have in life and then when we act out in ways to try to medicate those hurts with, with you know, I don't know, relationships, gambling, substances, these things take people captive. But when you came into a relationship with Jesus, he unlocked the doors to the prison. <coughs> he broke the chains, so you were free. So, I mean, the simple message here about the gospel is if they lock us up, the, the Lord's going to get us out so we can tell more about Jesus. That's the, that's the basic. But the thing in your life and my life is that, that you have been set free by Jesus and I know, I acknowledge, I understand that for people that have been taken captive by like addictive things and so forth, they are living a life that involves a lot of work to, with the help of Jesus and the power of the Spirit, to be ever more reminded that they are free. So they can walk in that freedom. So it's work to do it. But the fact of the matter is, if, 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 if the bad, if the bad men, if the bad angel Satan, if the world around us, tries to take you captive. Jesus has made us free. 2 Timothy 2.9, God's word is not chained. The gospel is free to run and be glorified. 2 Corinthians 3.17, where the spirit of the Lord is, where's the spirit of the Lord this morning? You can point. It's right in us, right? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. There's freedom. Now, I don't know if you're encouraged by that, but I certainly am. It can't lock us up. I can't lock myself up. The flame of the light of Jesus can't be stopped. Okay, second point of encouragement um, in this, uh, by the way, it's, it's, it's ironic and colorful the way this unfolds, okay? So like the high priest, you know, comes in like in the morning and, and says, okay, you know, we got the whole council together, so I'm gonna get all the, the, all the big shots here and we're gonna have us like a tribunal or something. And, and we're going to figure out a way to like punish these guys and get them to stop talking about Jesus. Uh, that's the strategy they tried last time, which failed, by the way. 
So they, they're going to do that. And then, then they send like the, the, the officers, the guard guys, to go get the apostles and bring them from the prison. And when they get there, they find the doors are locked, the guards are still standing there, and there's nobody in the prison. By the way, the, um, uh, the uh, jail breakout angel, he's pretty crafty. See, because he, he doesn't like kick the doors in and leave everything busted and open. He goes and he unlocks the door, he quietly gets the prisoners out. I don't know what he did to the guards, some kind of like, you know, Jedi mind trick on the guards, or puts them to sleep or something. And then he locks the doors when he leaves. So he leaves it like we need to leave the Eastern school, like, un, like we were never here. That's the coolest, that's such a cool, like, I think about these guys are going, wait a minute, we, we put them in the prison and they just like evaporate it. And so when the captain of the temple, the chief priests, heard these words, they were greatly perplexed, yet duh, wondering what this would come to. By the way, this is really interesting. They wonder, like, what it's going to lead to. We'll get to this in a minute, but they, I would think they would ask the question, like, how did that happen? They're thinking, well, it happened, and now, now what kind of trouble are we in? Uh, and, and then they, they go, and they, oh, by the way, the news gets worse, right? It's, it, it, it's like, what's going on? What are you going to do with this? And then, like, then a new messenger shows up and says, hey, looky here, guess what? They're back in the temple doing what you arrested them for. They're back doing what you wanted them not to do. I'm thinking, there's no trick candle, right? They're, they're, they're illuminated. They're, 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 they're teaching and preaching. And, and so they go, you know, we gotta round them up, but we can't take them by force because they're figuring out the crowd loves them. And so they gotta do it kind of quietly, and the apostles apparently agree to go, and so it's peaceable. And then they bring them in, and then what do they get? They get the same like bony finger of threat, right? Like, you know, you know, you know, we 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 strictly told you. I don't know what you know, strict, I guess like, right? So they strictly told you to not, not talk about this Jesus anymore. And how do they how does how do they respond? Well, the same way they did the first time, right? I mean, you know, any, any parents of, well, kind of children of any age, right? Actually, if you were a kid ever, and you were told that like, whatever you do, whatever you do, like, don't go near that swimming hole, what happens? The interest in the swimming hole goes up, right? So when you're told not to do something naughty, right, that can be a dark thing, right, because the interest in naughtiness, okay, the Bible talks about that, about how the law actually provokes sin. You know, when you're told you can't do it, you go, well, that must be pretty interesting. Let's go figure out how to do that. But how about if you're in the right place? How about if you're following the Lord and they tell you not to do it? The response is what? It's like boldness, right? It's what happened the first time. And you remember when it happened back in chapter 4, when they saw that it when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note of these men, or took note that these men had been with Jesus. And so, kind of the first point of encouragement, if they try to lock you up, Jesus has made you free. The second is that if they try to intimidate or scare people from sharing the good news of Jesus, the Lord emboldens us. And that's what we say, is they get bolder. And, and, and that, that boldness is like, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty remarkable. In fact, he tells them the same thing that he told them before. But he's not alone. It says, Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. Verse 30 now, the God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging on a tree. God exalted him as right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. So when they are threatened, intimidated, they respond with that boldness. And, and just like kind of a practical aspect here, the observation is the boldness comes from being with Jesus. Now Jesus has ascended. He's in heaven where he's seated right now. He sent the Holy Spirit. So if, if you're feeling a little timid, remember uh, Second Timothy, there's a verse that says that, that we don't have a spirit. We have not been given a spirit of timidity or fear, but rather of power and love and self-control. And so if, if we're living our lives so that we're like experiencing 
God, we're experiencing Jesus, that we're like we're close to Him, um, then then that, that boldness it just naturally flows. See, because I, I just you know just imagine that like you know you you're in a scary place and 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 you understand that like Jesus, who is like the creator of the universe, Jesus who is like way bigger than all things, is like right next to you. When if somebody were to try to frighten you and say, um, you know. You know, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. Don't talk about Jesus. So, what, 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 he's standing like right here. Like, are you out of your minds? But Jesus is Jesus is the one that will actually separate the sheep from goats and render judgment on you at the end of the age. This is the this is you're messing with like Jesus who's God. He's like right with me. Our ability to be bold is directly linked to how close we are to Jesus. Some of us are going through a course right now called Experiencing God. It's about that, so about experiencing Him. And, uh, and the course has us doing some scripture memory work, which by the way is like way easier for like nine-year-olds and for older people. But that uh, verse for the first week, okay, uh, this accountability time because I'm gonna do this from memory. This is Jesus in the upper room. He's talking to his disciples before he's gonna go to the cross, die, rise again, and, leave, and they're gonna be doing this stuff. And he says to him, I am the vine, you are the branches. The, the, the one who abides in me, like remains, like lives in me, and I in him, he is the one that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That's, that's John 15, verse 5. So, so there's the picture, right? It's, it's, if they scare us, the Lord's going to make us bold. And in our lives, what that has to do with is like being connected with the Lord. Being like as a branch into a vine, or, or basically just being like, like this kind of like type with Jesus. And if you're there, you can't be intimidated. Second point of encouragement. Try to scare us, the Lord's going to make us bold. The third point here it actually gets to the, the, the depth of the threat. The depth of the threat. It says that, that, that you know, when, when they get this response about, you know, you're the guys that nailed up the tree and, you know, <coughs> He's seated right near the Father. He's Lord and Savior. And we got the Holy Spirit. And I was like, you know, those are like fight words. And so it's when they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. So now they're like murderers, right? So, so let me ask you this. Let me ask myself this. It's like, am I afraid to die? Are we, are we afraid to die? Are we afraid of death? Uh, there, there was a, a friend, a Christian brother, um, who was over at Dave Kimball Hospital uh, a couple months ago. And he was gravely ill. He was actually in intensive care and he was in his final hours. And the uh, attending physician is someone who has been worshiping with us here. And uh, I, I don't see her here this morning, but she was the attending physician. And, you know, like HIPAA laws and all that stuff. But she got word uh, to me that um, uh, he needed a visit. His pastor was out of town. And so he got that this guy needed a visit. And, and what she said, she's not from around here. In Christianity, the message is brand new to her. What she said was that a family member had led her to believe that he was afraid to die. But he told me he's a Christian. I don't understand that. And then an interesting, interesting observation. And Christians have, I heard he's afraid to die. Now, it turns out he wasn't afraid to die. He was just kind of going through, well, uh, there was actually, a, actually a, I don't know, a, a movie guy. Not, not a model human, but Woody Allen. Said, I'm not afraid of dying, I just don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> but as Christians, are, like, are we afraid of death? <laughs> You do know that it's God's will that you die, right? Do you understand that? It is God's will that you will die, right? The evidence is everybody dies. And, and so will you, unless Jesus rejoins first. But it's his will that you die. So the only thing that is actually at hand when people are mad and want to kill you is like, is today the day? And is this how I'm going to die? We, that's what we don't know is when and how. But we know we're going to die, right? Um, and, and, and I... This, this is like ch challenging to me and, and perhaps to you that like if you were under a threat of death, like how would you do as far as uh, like not letting the candle, the light of Jesus be extinguished? 
Um, and I, I love what this guy Gamaliel does, okay? Which it, it's, it, he's, um, by the way, he, he's the same guy that mentored Saul of Tarsus, who gets a new name and is the Apostle Paul. And, he's, and it says here that he's honored, he's respected, and he's a smart guy. And he's really, really smart. And I think he's going to kind of cipher this stuff up. Say, okay, so let me get this right, okay? Like, not too long ago, we all agreed it was a good idea to kill Jesus, and he rose from the dead. Huh. He rose from the dead. Okay. And so these guys are, like, doing miracles in the name of Jesus. And they, we put them in prison, and they do some magic trick and disappear. He said, like, I'm starting to connect the dots, okay? Is Jesus rose from the dead. That says something about him and his relationship with God. These guys are doing miracles. That says something about the role of God and what they're doing. We lock him in prison, and somebody breaks him out, and it's a miracle. Gee, I wonder how that happened. And it's, it's like, you know, I think the light bulb's on with this guy. And, and so when they're enraged, and they're, getting, they're plotting to kill him. And if you notice, but, 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 uh, but he... Um, he gets orders to put the apostles outside. He basically calls an executive session, okay? And so we got to talk about this. He says, look, here's the deal. I think it's possible these guys might be trick candles. See, if, what if they're not? Like if God's not in this, and then he gives examples of two guys who, like Jesus, raised up a movement and insurrection, and then they died, and then it just faded away. So if, if this is the work of man, if God's not in it, then it'll just burn itself up. It'll be over and done. But if God is in it, we can't stop it. And that's, I think, the centerpiece of this whole text. If God is in it, we can't stop it. And so what I suggest you guys do is, like, don't be killing like 12 more guys and watch God raise them from the dead, you know? Because you already killed one and God raised them from the dead. This is like, you're in dangerous territory here. So let them be. And let's see what's, what happens. By the way, we know what happens, right? You know, 2,000 years ago, I'm looking at people that are all the spiritual descendants of those 12 guys that can all stand up and hold up their finger and sing this little light of light. Because even the threat of death can't extinguish it. God will make it work. And by the way, what we see happening here is, right, it's not their time. All 12 of those guys die, right? Most of them are martyred for their faith. All 12 of them die, but it's not their time. Why? Because he's got work for them. If you're a Christian, the reason you're like, you know, and you're here, because you're, you're probably like up right <coughs> nourishment and stuff. If you're a Christian, the reason you're still ticking is because you are on the gospel mission. And when your time is done, I'll come back to the fear of death thing. Jesus is dying on the cross. Remember the criminal on either side? One criminal turns to Jesus and says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember what he says? He says, truly. By the way, if the one who is the way and the truth and the life says truly to you, I think it's true. He says, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me. Where? In paradise. Right? So, let me come back to the fear of dying. Do you believe what Jesus said is true? That the moment you die, you go from this place was this is not paradise. I mean, yeah, I know there's some, some fall days where it's all beautiful and the, you know, and the kids are playing in the leaves and it's crisp and the sky's blue and you pumpkin spice people are satisfying your dark appetites. <laughs> it's paradise. No, it's not. This place is a mess. It's so are we. But the moment we die, we step into paradise. And so I, I, let me say it this way, okay, if the first point of encouragement here is that try to jail us, the Lord has made us free. Try to intimidate us, the Lord has made us bold. Try to kill us, the Lord has already given us eternal life, everlasting life. And then finally the last one here, which is, um, th th this is actually a little different, but it's kind of weird, it's like, they agree, Camellia is going to point, so they, they sign up for that plan. Uh, and, and then, um, they call the apostles back into the room, and they beat them. So they give them a good whooping. And then they give them the same charge they gave before. They charge them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and then they let them go. Now, I don't know about you, but like when I, like, like when I heard when, I, when I've been beat up and stuff, you know, I'm like, oh, 
you know, oh, I can't believe this happened to me, right? right? That's, that, is that the normal human response? <laughs> Instead, these guys are going, and they're out there going, woo-hoo! We were kind of worthy to take a beating for the name of Jesus. I would offer to you, that's like supernatural weird. And it's because what happens is, is that this Jesus, he is the one that turns darkness into light. He is the one that turns sorrow and pain into joy and rejoicing. You know, we sang, they sang that song at the beginning, um, uh, I'm trading my sorrows. And, and there's a line in there that's actually, you know, from Scripture, it's the idea that, that even though, like, 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 you know, pain, suffering, you know, sorrow may, may, you know, may tarry until the morning, right? In the morning, there's joy. Joy comes in the morning. And that's a certain promise for us, is whatever our brokenness is that brings us sorrow or hurt or pain is going to be replaced by sorrow. And, and they, they're like living this, and so can we right now. So, so let me just kind of put a, a, a ramp on this, okay? Which is that, that his miraculous power has blown the doors off anything that pulled us captive. And that's good news. And, and, and his presence emboldens us in the face of anything that would intimidate us. And his, by his sovereign power, by the blood of Jesus, he has given us forgiveness of sins, but mostly, I'm thinking now about new and everlasting life, resurrection life. And so we are in the field of spiritual combat. We are like the immortals. Now back in the day, I think it was in Xerxes, right? It was king of the Persians. And there was a, he, had a, he had an elite army corps, and they, they spread the word around that they were the immortals to like scare their enemies. Like, can you imagine like being in combat with people that like won't die? Yeah, the whole world is. And then people is us that are immortals. I like you, but that, like, that floats my boat. The idea that, that they, they, can't take, they can't take away what I have, which is everlasting life. And then finally, he is the force that moves in all of the pain and suffering difficulty to bring rejoicing because we're serving a God who suffered and died for us. And as we participate in that, we're accomplishing his kingdom purposes. And this little light of mine, yeah, it's shining bright when that happens. I love this text. I'm so encouraged because I'm looking at the body of Christ here and thinking we're in a dark world, all kinds of brokenness. And, uh, and the quite simple punchline is, uh, we would be like the trick candle that can't be extinguished by whatever winds might blow. And that this Jesus thing, it's like unstoppable. And how cool is that? And, and by the way, uh, you know, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're kind of concerned about the score here, maybe it's the start of the fourth quarter, you know, I'm not so sure. Just, just go to the, you know, flip right back here. <coughs> just quiet and like sneak a peek right there. And uh, yeah, Jesus wins and so do we. Oh, that's not the big one. Revelation. Jesus wins, and so do we. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the encouragement your word can bring, even as we read an account here of people trying to stop the church. And we see a miraculous power to open prisons. We see a miraculous work to embolden. We see a marvelous work to bring us life in the face of death threats, and the ability to allow us to rejoice even when we're experiencing pain and suffering and sorrow. What a great God you are, Lord. Would you encourage us ever more this morning? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.
The night before Jesus went to the cross, he had assembled in an upper room in Jerusalem for a meal. And it was a meal of remembrance that had been commanded by his father and ours for his chosen people, the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. So were his followers. And so they gathered at this meal, and, and the occasion that they were celebrating was our great God doing what he does. Because they had been taken captive in Egypt. And we just saw, what does God do when God's people are taken captive? He sets them free. And he did that, remember, by raising up Moses and the plagues and all that. And, and um, as they were in the process of being delivered, he gave instructions. He said, I want you to have a meal to remember this, to remember that I'm a God who delivers his people, that I'm a, a rescuing God, a saving God, and that you belong to me, and I love you. And so this meal was called the Passover, and as they were um, enjoying that meal, in that very precious time with Jesus, he knew that the rescue of people was about to happen again. Just like in Egypt, with signs and wonders and the miraculous, but that rescue would be as Jesus lays down his life to rescue us and those followers. By the blood of Jesus, we're set free from captivity to sin and to death. And we're forgiven of our sins. It's a wonderful thing he's doing. So he said, I want you to have another meal for remembrance. And that's what this is, as we eat the bread, we remember that it is his body that he laid down for us, willingly he did that. And when we drink the cup, we're reminded of his blood, which was his very life shed for us. The wages of human sin is human death. And so Jesus, who was God, also took on fully the form of man. So in his human death, he could pay our sin debt. And his blood is that is that price. And so when we come to this table, that's what we're remembering. And we call it a celebration because it is a wonderful celebration of his love for us, how deep the Father's love for us, we just sang. And that he, he made his son the ransom, he paid the price for us. And so this is a, a moment when we are both burdened by his death because of our sin, but delighted by his death and took care of our sin. And so uh, that's what we're going to do here. So if you um, are a follower of Jesus, this is an open table. And we will have the bread and the cup together. Um, God's word does tell us that we need to examine ourselves before we come to the table. <laughs> because uh, we know that all of our sin was nailed to a cross a couple thousand years ago. But yet we still stumble. And so it doesn't make any sense for us to come to the table if we have a little bit of sin yet with us that we have not given to him. So we just take the time of confession right here. And you know what? If you have not given him the whole load of your sin, maybe you're hearing this in a fresh way right now, you can give all of it to him in this moment, and he will take it all, and you will be set free forevermore. And so this could be a very special, just quiet minute here. For all of us as we do business and make sure we don't have any sin. By the way, we're going to celebrate all of our sins we're given, so there's no reason to have it right now. So we're going to give that to him. Perhaps there's somebody here that will be forgiven of all their sin in, in the moment they have. So let's just take a minute, shall we, and just, just commune with him and give him anything that doesn't belong to us that he took from us at the cross. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Mallory, would you give thanks for the bread, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to partake of this bread. Because in eating this bread, we become part of Jesus' body, symbolically. We 
are reminded that we're the candle that cannot be put out. Thank you for this bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. For I receive from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, but said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As you receive your piece of bread, I would uh, invite you to hold it, that we might eat together as a symbol of our unity in the body of Christ. These are words of Jesus. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life, I am the bread of life. Let's eat together. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers. Not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Jack, would you give thanks for the cup, please? Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to meet again in your name and in your presence. We thank you also for the many blessings we enjoy each day. But most of all, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, that we may enjoy eternal life. And as we take this drink today, help us to appreciate the significance of all of these events. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you.
the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus' love for you is so intensely personal. I'm speculating, but I believe it to be true. That if you were the only one among our human race to have rebelled against God, that he would have left his throne in heaven, and he would have died for your sin. That's how much he loves you. So very personal. So as we are in the same room doing this, you don't need to wait for the rest of us. Drink this in communion with your Savior, who loves you and gave himself for you, that you might be his and live forevermore, serving him to the glory of his Father. This between you and your Savior, drink with him.
prayer will be written aside. But uh, for now, let us uh, close our time together in worship. Find us something that we do.